Okay, so in the last video we had it set up so that you know, we could set a target for both the enemy missile and the player missile. Uh, now notice the player it was an XY coordinate, but for the enemy it was one of the game objects, uh, or sprites, depending on how you want to call it. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to actually use the mouse to set the target location. Uh, and again, I'm using Python 3. This will not work in Python 2. Uh, it's a math thing, not really. Uh, you can you could fix it if you if you really wanted to do it. Um, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like. So I've already automatically set that location. Let's say I want to intercept that missile. I'm going to click there, and now of course it doesn't do anything because we haven't programmed it. But it goes towards whatever coordinates I have set. So let's take a look at how we did that. And so. This is where the Simple Python game library comes in. Uh, so basically what I did was I have created uh, in my game class, so it's missile command, uh, well I've created a, a game class, right, called missile command. And so down here, this used to say game. But what I've done is I've created uh, my own kind of game class called called Missile Command because that's what the name of the game is. Nothing else has changed. And what I've done is I've made it a child of the Simple Python Game Library game class. So what that means, maybe in layman's terms, is that the Missile Command class is the exact same thing as the SPL game, uh, game class. So everything that, that can do, now the Missile Command class can do. So, so what that lets us do, uh, well, a couple things real quick is don't forget we have to initialize it two underscores before and after. This is what you need: screen width, screen height, background. I should say color. Sorry, that's a typo. Let's fix that. Uh, color, the title, and the splash time. That was a splash screen. So the default is five. Uh, if you don't put anything, if you put zero, makes it not appear at all. So then we need to call the parent constructor it's called so two underscores in it two underscores after and it's the same information there's there's no real differences there and again let me fix that typo so what this does uh, is I've already created a way of clicking the game screen for you it's it's part of SPGL you don't have to worry about how it works trust me it just does so I've defined a function called click and it has to be called click self so that's going to be the game object x and y and what happens is through some kind of magical thing i don't know uh, i click the screen and the x y coordinates of the click are sent to this particular method and then when i do that is i call player missile set target x y which in the last video we saw sets the target x coordinates and the target y coordinates um, and then it, it shoots towards it. Um, so you, you saw that earlier when I ran it. Now you'll see a couple things I've added here. Um, I've created what's called a state. Okay, So when the player missile starts the game, its state is ready. It's sitting there, it is ready to be launched. Okay, So when I click a spot on the screen and I launch the missile, its state is no longer ready. Uh, it, it, its state is launched. Okay. The reason uh, for doing this is if we didn't if we didn't do it, if I clicked the a spot on the screen, like let's say I clicked here, the missile would start moving in that direction. But then if I clicked over here, the missile would then start moving in that direction. Okay, so I have to keep track of what the actual state of the missile is. So I've used ready and launched. So setting target. So if the state is ready, then I can actually set the target X and target Y. Okay. Uh, and I've created also a self uh, I guess an instance attribute, target X, which is equal to the target X and the target Y. We'll need those later. Uh, and then I've also created something called self state equals launched. So I've clicked it. If it's ready, boom, I can shoot it towards that direction. Its state is now launched. So the next time I click, none of this will happen because the state is launched. And in my tick method, if the state of the missile is launched, so if it's just sitting there, do nothing. But if it is launched, then I want to move the missile. So that is pretty much all that needs to get done. Now notice I commented out 
this particular thing because I don't need it anymore. That was just for testing. Okay, because I'm not setting the target at the start anymore. I'm setting the target only after I click up here in the missile command class. And if I do click it, it calls that player set target. Uh, the X and Y is what we we clicked. I, if if the state is ready, then I can set the new targets coordinates, calculate the DX DY, calculate the slope, change the state to launched, and if in the tick function, which I mentioned is automatically called 30 times a second, if all goes well, um, if it's launched, then I can move it. Let's take a look at that one more time. So notice it's not moving, so I want to click, and it's going to go over there. Notice here are the coordinates, I think, that I, I clicked. No, that's the coordinates for this, sorry. Uh, ignore that. Um, I didn't print those out. So that's that.